Hi, we are Team 22 and in this video, we discuss about how we design and implement our own new programming language which we have named as APT. The name APT is derived from the initials of our team members name and also we found it catchy as we can relate it to an acronym APT for aptitude. The inspiration for our new language was C language. The parsing logic is implemented using Java and Antler 4.5. Runtime is written in Java. In our language, integer and boolean are the data types which are supported. Also, support for scoping is provided using local and global variable definition. We have used if then else as the conditional statements. For loop is used for looping. The data structure used is array. We have also support for functions, recursion and print statement. The high level language programs corresponding to our new language has extension .apt. For example, add.apt. When we compile add.apt, intermediate code will be generated in a file named add.intr. In our language, we have tried to keep variable definition and initializations simple and short. User can define a variable like integer a. Similarly, he can initialize a variable like a equal to 12. And now I will explain the apt grammar. So this is my grammar file. The grammar file is apt.g4. The statement, um, I mean, the grammar will start from the block thing. So any program has to start with the block and it has to end in end of file. The block has a function declaration and a statement. In statement, we have assignment, function call, if statement, for statement, where declare return expression. We have also these operators defined. Addition operator, division operator, multiplication, subtraction operator. We have print statement also been taken care. Let me show you apt.java. This is the file which is actually the antler file which will generate a parse tree. So here uh, my input will be through command line and using the help of apt base listener or java, a dot higher level languages will be converted to intermediate code. So the, this is my apt base listener code which will be invoked by apt.java. Let me show you how to do this thing in command line. These are my codes, high level languages, .apt extension. I will use, now I will run them and I will get intermediate language. I will compile those codes. Say suppose I am trying to compile add.apt. So this is a past generated for add.apt. Let me show you the add.apt high level code. This is the intr file. This is the intermediate code generator for it. Let me also open the intermediate file. So in high level language, we have three variables defined, value assigned to them, and then we are doing the addition of a plus b plus c. Now the intermediate code. So it is actually declaring a variable with g int. So any variable defined in my in my programming language outside a function is considered as a global variable. And it, it will use load statement to load the value inside that variable. First the addition of a plus b will happen. It will be stored in a temporary variable. After that the temporary variable and the c will be added and then that will be stored in another temporary variable. And then the print statement will execute. This is how the intermediate language looks like in my code. Let me show you how to generate uh, the intermediate language for the recursion program. Let me show you the recursion high level language. So this is the recursion high level language and the intermediate file generated just right now. So here I am taking one variable, define, declaring that variable with a value, then I am calling the fact function, factorial function n. So this is the factorial function. 
and let me show you the intermediate code generator for the same this is the intermediate variable intermediate code generator for the factorial function so we are defining integer n which is a global integer we are loading the value 5 inside n then we are doing a function call so before doing the function call function call is the function is taking an argument so pushing that argument inside the function and then after the function in the function definition when the function is called we are actually popping the value what the function receives as an argument then we check if n is equal to 1 then we will return 1 otherwise we will do n minus 1 and so this particular operation over here return n into fact n minus 1 is described here in intermediate language so i will do n minus 1 store the value in temp1 then i will push to temp1 because there is a factorial function called again recursively and then n into function the value received after doing this factorial function will be stored in temp2 and that will be returned back this is how the intermediate code looks like Now let us look into the runtime code. This code is responsible for taking the input. That is the input for this file is the intermediate code which is generated. So uh, the main functionality is the intermediate, this, the following intermediate code is broken into tokens. And since the left hand side is always the function that needs to be performed in our code, we have used it as switch cases so that if so that if you want to perform a load operation it comes to the load and that variable that is the next token will be pushed to the map so in the here we are using symbol table and a boolean map that is using hash map and we have implemented stack using array for performing push and pop operation which will be required when we perform recursive functions so now let us look at an example of recursive function now in this recursive function we give the input value as phi so when we run the program we get 120 as the output and now let us look into the if case in the if case we are declaring two variables and here we are checking whether a is greater than b and if it is greater we are printing a else we are printing the value of b and now we have got the value 10 and now let's look into local and global variable here to differentiate the blocking we have just added a variable inside a function so now <coughs> sorry so now um, inside the function when you are printing a the value 8 should be displayed and after that the value 7 so now let us look into the output We are getting the output as 8 and 7 and now let us look into the boolean here if c the value of c is greater than d we print true else we print false Now since the value of C is less than D, we get the value false. That's it. Thank you.